Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. Now if you are a regular to my channel, you will know that I'm quite a big fan of the Mazda MX-5. I've owned four and I'm even wearing an owner's club jacket for extra nerd points. The car is in its fourth generation and fair to say it's been around for quite some time. Since production started in 2015, it has received a few updates, but this is the first time the facelift has been given a facelift. Okay, the facelift isn't actually a major change from the previous version, but if you ask me, that's no bad thing. You will need to look carefully, but in case you can't see the difference, let me give you a hint. The LED headlights have been redesigned and now include the daytime running lights and the rear lights have been tweaked as well, as well as the rear deflectors. There's also a new aero grey paint choice as well, but other than that is as you were before when it comes to the styling. Mazda has also made changes to the inside by installing a larger 8.8 inch display which makes use of wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The instrument cluster has also received an update and the rear view mirror is now frameless with an auto dimming function. Mazda has also ensured that the latest MX-5 should be even better to drive as the steering has been revised and the dynamic stability control has a setting specifically for track days. It's tuned for novices in mind and allows enough slip to help push limits but will still intervene when necessary. Okay, so the looks may be rather familiar to say the least and it's the same story under the bonnet because you have the same choice of firepower as you did before. You have either a 1.5 litre or a 2 litre, both of which are naturally aspirated petrols mated to a manual gearbox with power, of course, fed to the rear wheels. The 1.5 offers 130 horsepower along with 152 newton meters of torque, whilst the 2 litre offers 104 horsepower along with 205 newton meters of torque. The 1.5 litre will hit 62 miles per hour in 8.3 seconds and will continue to a top speed of 127 miles per hour, whilst the 2 litre will hit the same 62 sprint time in 6.5 seconds and will continue to a top speed of 136 miles per hour. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get some driving done. So this is a quick drive. These are really my first impressions. Well, I say first impressions. Regular viewers will know that I drove this generation of MX-5 a fair few years ago. I don't know the area at all, that is my disclaimer. And these media days, when you're filming at least, they're always a bit of a rush, so yes, apologies if this video may seem a little bit frantic at times. So I'm in the two litre version, which in my opinion is the one to have of course you get more power but you get some extra goodies which if you're buying this as a driver's car they are key so the two liter gives you a limited slip diff a front uh, a front strut brace get your words out and put your teeth back in and it also gives you bill steen shocks as well bill steen bill stein oh and of course with it being an ms5 you get the wonderful six speed gear change it is a peach nice short throw and it's as it should be oh yes from the get-go this car just puts a smile on your face nice rorty engine nice thrum to it and above all the wind in your hair in fact let me put up this window so it doesn't completely ruin the audio And we've hit roadworks. Okay, fantastic. Now, although this has got the uprated shock absorbers, the ride, for the most part, is compliant. This, like any UK road, is pretty battered. But it's soaking up the bumps rather nicely. These Recaro seats, by the way, they are a dream. They're lovely. And of course, you're sat nice and low in the car. You, you really feel a part of the car as opposed to being sat on the car. Oh, it doesn't matter how fun the car is, it can't eliminate traffic. A few minutes later. As I mentioned in the voiceover, one of the changes for this updated MX-5 is the larger infotainment system. And one thing I like about it is that it's not actually touchscreen. You may think that's a bad thing, isn't it? But you use a little rotary dial down here, which has actually got a nice tactile sound to it. And it means that 
I personally prefer this because it just it means it's easy to operate on the move. You're not having to try and aim and fire and miss. And I think it's a better way of doing it. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, you've got Android Auto, you've got everything you're gonna need in this day and age. Oh, this, is, this is ridiculous. 2,000 years later. Good turn in circle. Good test for the MX-5. Engine makes a decent noise, nice throttle response, and the gear change. Well, I've already spoken about the gear change. It is magnificent. Is it the best in the business? If I'm honest, it isn't, but it's still very good. Uh, I'll be honest, I do prefer my MX-5, but uh, I've got a short shifter, so I suppose I'm kind of cheating. The ride, whilst it's firm, it is pretty compliant supple enough to use the car every day for some this will be a weekend car but yes okay practicality aside this is a car you can use every day without any real problems if you ask me unless you want to carry more than one passenger then yeah you may struggle and although a lot of time has passed since the mx5 first was revealed to the world in fact that was a little over 35 years ago believe it or not the ethos the philosophy of the car hasn't changed of course it's got bigger it's had to get heavier with safety systems and convenience systems and heated seats etc but the the dna of the car is still there the beating heart of what makes their mazda mx5 special it's definitely still there and it's refreshing that you can still buy a car like this. It feels like enthusiasts' cars, drivers' cars, they're dying. The hot hatch, for example, that breed as we know it is dying. I know there's electric versions coming, but to me, they're not the same. I'm not comparing this to a hot hatch, but my point is, real, raw drivers' cars, they're a bit short in demand nowadays, not unless you want to spend a lot of money for a Cayman GT4, for example. This is still well priced, it's still obtainable for most people. And it still offers a lot of smiles for miles. It really does. Yeah, the MX-5 for me is just happiness on wheels. And I think if, you, if you're really serious about driving, you have to get the two litre. The 1.5 litre is pretty good. I drove that quite a few years ago. It's not. It's far from a bad car, but yeah, if it were my money, if it were my choice, this would be the one. And I'd have the soft top for two good, actually three good reasons. Reason one is it's cheaper. Um, reason two is it's lighter, more importantly. And reason three, as much as I love the RF, it is bite bite the back of your hand, beautiful, but. Because of the wet house design, when the roof is down, you get quite a large blind spot, and the the um, the kind of target system it acts as a kind of wind tunnel, so you get loads of wind noise in your right ear, which does detract a little bit from the uh, experience. And what an experience it is! Yes, okay, it, it isn't a particularly fast car but it's all about the balance, the poise, and any tired other cliche words you want to um, throw about. Since the last time I filmed a Mark IV MX-5, the trim levels have changed. The MX-5 is now available in Prime Line, Exclusive Line, and Homura, with a choice of a Roadster or an RF as before. The Prime line is only available with the 1.5 litre engine. The exclusive line can be had with either engine, whilst the Homura exclusively uses the 2 litre engine. Prices start from a reasonable £28,000, but in this video, you are presented with the Homura, which starts from £34,800. Standard features include 8.8 inch infotainment screen, 17 inch BBS alloys, Recaro seats, limited slip diff, black door mirrors, red Brembo brake calipers, front strut brace, sports suspension, reversing camera, climate control, heated seats, LED headlights, LED rear lights, keyless entry, 
DSC with track mode, as well as a decent amount of safety systems. Oh, it's a lovely car to really rev out. And of course, with it being naturally aspirated, you have to do that to get the power out of it, but that's fine. There's a joy to be had about climbing through the rev range. Like a roller coaster, isn't it? The anticipation builds up, builds up, you change gear and you do it all over again. Such joyful little cars. And I love the soul red paintwork. It is a gorgeous colour. Mazda have been using it for years. It's a triple layer paint and my word, it is pretty. Very, very pretty. Such a good looking car, the MX-5. And although the design hasn't really been changed that's, uh, that much, let's be honest, I'm happy about that because why fix something that isn't broken? When I first saw the Mark IV MX-5, I thought, oh, that's a good looking car. Um, it was a little bit divisive because it, it kind of had this kind of angry puppy face look to it but I thought it was a bit of a stunner, even more so, like I say, in this sold red paintwork. It is divine. There's not many cars nowadays that give you this kind of driving pleasure. What's great is that Mazda hasn't mucked about with the formula over the years okay some will view the mark III as a little bit uh, a, a, an ink blot in the mx5's history but the, the mark III isn't a bad car it was just a bit heavy a bit boaty the mark IV is of course a return to form and i haven't really got anything bad to say about it am i biased honestly yeah, I am, and if you don't like it, then, well, I'm sorry. If I were to be picky, it would be nice to have a bit more power, even though this two litre offers generous power, it would be nice to have a bit more. But when you're going down your favorite B road, that concern, it washes away rather quickly. As much as I'm somewhat biased towards the MX-5, I'm not going to let my love for this roadster blind my judgment. As much as it pains me to say this, I would say the Toyota GR86 is the sharper car to drive and it offers more power with a price that is virtually the same when compared to the cheapest two litre version of the MX-5. Mind you, what will go in the MX-5 favour is availability. So guys, my time with the car is over. I've had it a little bit longer than I should have done really, but uh, yeah, things always do take a little bit longer when you're filming them. A big thank you to Mazda UK for inviting me to their media drive day. I will be driving a few other models today, so be sure to uh, keep your eyes peeled for that content. So guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this video or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.